the modern Falkland Islands, home to almost 3,000 people. Situated 300 miles away from South America, they're quite a difficult location to get to, and with no native population, what were the origins of human interaction here? To find out, we need to turn back time to the 1500s, when English explorer John Davis sighted the islands for potentially the first time on board his ship, the Desire. Davis spotted the islands on the 14th of August, 1592, a day now celebrated as Falklands Day. John didn't hang around for long though, he didn't even step foot on the island, and continued along on his voyage. Bye John! The Falklands motto, Desire the Right, stems from the name of his ship, and he is now a stamp. So that's nice for John. After John's discovery, it took a whopping 98 years until somebody landed on the islands. And it was another John, in fact, just to make matters slightly confusing. In 1690, John Strong, an English marina commanding the HMS Welfare, named the islands after the treasurer of the navy, Anthony Carey, the 5th Viscount of Falkland. It's one way to appease the boss, I guess. Anywho, this John shortly sailed away from the now named Falkland Islands, and they were left uninhabited. Well, apart from the penguins, of course. This remained until 1764, when a Frenchman named Louis found a colony at Port Louis on East Falkland, unknown to the British. In the year following, a British expedition led by John Byron, yes, it's another John, sorry, established a settlement named Port Egmont on Saunders Island. Ruins of the settlement still stand today. The British shortly developed a garrison and several permanent buildings in 1766 after Captain John McBride, I'm not saying anything, was sent to secure the position and Britain's basis of claim over the islands. In the meantime, Louis was ordered by the French government to dismantle his settlement at Port Louis and sell it over to the Spanish for diplomatic reasons. The Spanish left Francisco Bucareli, the governor of Buenos Aires, a then Spanish territory, in charge of the port and of expelling the British from their claim. This then leads to 1770. After the British refused to abandon Port Egmont, the Spanish responded with force. Five warships were dispatched from Argentina, carrying 1,400 Spanish soldiers. With a British settlement under the command of George Farmer, finally, a new name, they were forced to agree to terms which allowed them to sail back to Britain. With British and Spanish relations now being very delicate, and with Spain trying to persuade France to support them, these three empires were on the verge of a potential war. However, King Louis XV did not wish for war, so the Spanish were obliged to negotiate with Britain. And so, Port Egmont was restored to Britain in 1771 by Captain John Scott, another John. That's five now? Until 1774, when Britain left the settlement due to economic reasons. Back to present day, Saunders Island is currently owned by the Pole Evans family, and Susan Pole Evans was able to show me the graveyard of the first British settlement. This is from the old British settlement in 1765, and there's supposed to be five graves here, so I think that's one, two, three, Although these events happened centuries ago, the ruins on Saunders Island stand as a memory of this conflict, and the plaque left by the British in 1774 to mark their sovereignty still stands there today.